decorating table is it's an artistic painting. Art is more dynamic. Join us on the Baker's Road every Thursday from the network service of the MTA. Baker's Road. Celebrating creativity. Don't miss it. Sam Brain Drain in Nations Health System to Brain Gain, President Buhari directs Health Minister. As the Nigerian Medical Association and other stakeholders in the health sector, we support these initiatives. Defense Headquarters announces arrest of perpetrators of the church attack. The military combined operations with the DSS arrested four terrorists at Erika in the Kili Lake government area of Kogi State. European Union backs Niger's economic policies, grants 1.12 million euros for documentation and visibility of its projects. The project that we are launching today is to assist the ministry with their efforts to design and implement the best practice economic policy proposals. Hello and welcome to the Network News on NTA. I'm Elizabeth Omori. Hello, John Adams joins us from Lagos and Salama Ridachukun from Kaduna. A quick reminder that this news can be watched live on our website info.ng slash live as well as our other social media platforms. Political leaders in the country have been tasked to stay focused on nation building and uphold the ultimate objective of promoting Niger's national interests at all times. President Mohamed Buhari, who through the challenge while playing host to former state chairman of the defunct Congress for Progressive Change, has stated his unshakable resolve to maintain the oneness of Nigeria as a matter of honor. State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports. Exchanging views on the leadership of the defunct Congress for Progressive Change from across Nigeria, President Buhari expressed delight with their continued dedication to the ideals of democratic governance. He described as delightful by the doggedness with which they pursued their vision and goals for a greater Nigeria and improved living standard of the people had not dwindled. Nigeria, the president emphasized, requires more of such patriotic disposition and steadfastness to realize her potential. The question of you in us is how far I assure you that um, our main objective is the program of the government. We will go through all the troubles from the Jews of January 1966 to date. I know what I mean by this. We still are going to annihilate our sorrows. said the enormous challenges facing Nigeria at this time are well known to Nigerians, trusting that they also appreciate the determination and commitment with which his administration is confronting the challenges given the constraints and limitations it faces. We shall remain resolute to continue to deliver on the promises we made to Nigerians and to ensure that we attain greater milestones in terms of economic growth, infrastructure and development, provision of security, and the war against corruption, among other responsibilities of the government. We have spontaneously been governed by the Constitution in our conduct of the world. Please continue to make patriotic and new emerging skills of Nigeria in our respective course. 
the President assured his guests that CPC is adequately represented in the Federal Executive Council and directed them to work with the ministers towards ensuring their effective participation in the current political dispensation, describing President Buhari as a patriarch of the CPC, the chairman of the forum, and former chairman of the party in Niger State, Omar Shaibu, commended the Nigerian leader for providing strong leadership and placing the country on the path to sustainable growth and development. Equally worthy of mention is her effort in ensuring a level playing ground in the electoral landscape of this country. Contrary to the constant criticism of the opposition parties of today, you are supposed to earn their commendation because you gave them what they denied you when they were in power. Our sacrifice to your cause over the years were never in vain, Mr. President. He said CPC, which had always garnered millions of votes in elections across the country, is prepared to support the APC presidential candidate Ashiwaji Bola Ahmed in the 2023 elections. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTN News. To health matters, the Minister of Health, Dr. Saige Hanui, has been directed to fashion out effective structures towards training the brain drain in the nation's health sector to bring gain through the repatriation of knowledge and skills of the Nigerian medical experts in the diaspora. President Muhammad Buhari gave the directive while receiving the newly inaugurated Executive Committee members of the Nigerian Medical Association on a curtsy visit. He said already models aim at revitalizing the health care system for improved quality of care and package to care providers in the country are being explored by the Health Sector Reform Committee, chaired by Vice President Yemi Oshibaju. State House Correspondent Adam Sam once again reports. I thank you to fans of peace by consistently choosing peaceful resolutions of differences, President Muhammad Buhari said the Nigerian Medical Association pushed forward several requests to government and interventions made on matters pertinent to the national health system. Some of the recommendations include the review and amendment of the National Health Insurance Act, upgrading and equipping of the health institutions, loans to fund hospital equipment, repeal and reenactment of the medical and Dental Practitioners Act as well as improved funding for the newly established Universities of Medical Sciences. I am pleased to inform you that most of these recommendations have been addressed whereas further action has been taken to see the results in global cross-cutting administrative processes with legal implications. The Central Bank of Nigeria support for the private pharmaceutical sector in the local manufacturing of medicines and medical consumables has also led to the provision of 100 million naira for indigenous pharma manufacturers and healthcare industries as well as to expand their capital base. In the area of healthcare infrastructure, the president said his administration has equipped federal tertiary hospitals with 100 oxygen generation plants to guarantee nationwide sufficiency, provided isolation centers and intensive care units, as well as established the novel National Health Emergency Medical and Ambulance Services. Our health sector and form quality is currently exploring models for revitalizing our healthcare system in ways that improve quality of care and the benefit package to care for the riders. It is my hope that the Nigerian Medical Association and other stakeholders in the health sector will support these initiatives and chart a course to track a health system which best meets the needs of Nigerians in the 24th century. While formally congratulating Nigeria's Dr. Osaho Enabulele on his recent election as president of the World Medical Association, the president wished him and indeed the new executive members of the Nigeria Medical Association successful tenures and urged them to use their positions towards supporting the improvement in healthcare delivery.
the president of the Nigerian Medical Association, Dr. Uche Roland Ojima, commended President Buhari for his steadfast war against corruption, assenting to the National Health Insurance Authority Act and other reforms aimed at improving Nigeria's health indices. We believe that though the road has not been easy, we are doing our best. And by the grace of God, it shall end well. May prosperity touch you and your administration fairly. We call for full and appropriate implementation of the National Health Insurance Authority Act to the benefit of Nigerians. The elongation of retirement age for medical consultants to 70 years and 65 years for non consultants and other health care workers will help stabilize the rapid decline in available numbers through health care workforce to the ultimate benefit of the nation and her citizens. The Nigerian Medical Association medicates for federal government representation at the inauguration of Dr. Enabulele as president of the World Medical Association in Berlin, Germany later this year. From the State House, Adam Usambu, NTA News. A victim security assailant linked to the old truth attack in Ongo State have been arrested. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Lucky Irabo, announced this at a major interactive session in Abuja. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports. But there are still a meeting between the pen and the sword not seeking ways to promote peace in Nigeria. Four chief executives of media houses in the round table with the chief of defense staff, General Loki Irabo. Paying less attention to the true propaganda by the criminals while highlighting the success stories of the military operations is key in the fight, says the chief of defense staff. But a bitter story that gladdens the heart of the media chiefs from the defense chief. The perpetrators of our church attack arrested. On the 4th of August 2022, the military, the combined operations with the DSS, arrested four terrorists at Erika in the Kehi Lek government area of Kogi State. These are Idris Abdumalik Omeza, otherwise known as Ben Malik, Momo Otohu Babubaka. Aliu Yusuf Etopa, Awa Ishak Olimisi. Now, Omeza is one of the masterminds of the 5th June attack on the Catholic Church in Awo, as well as the attack on the police station in Adavi, local government area in Kogi State, that led to the killing of a policeman as well as weapons being carried away. Similarly, several coordinated airstrikes have eliminated terrorists and their cells in parts of Aduna, Kusana, Gurumu, Niger and Zamfara Sus. The federal government and of course the commander-in-chief has directed me and of course the entire members of not just the armed forces but the defense and security agencies to do everything possible that whoever is still being held in captivity, that we undertake operations to ensure that we have them indeed rescued, healed, and hurt. The defense headquarters assures residents of the Federal Capital Territory of their safety as the nation's seat of power is adequately protected. From the defense headquarters in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Meanwhile, a three-day peace and security summit has opened in Gombe State. Being the first of its kind in the state, speakers at the opening ceremony, including the Inspector General of Police, Usman al Kalibaba, called for collaboration and networking among security agencies for safety of lives and property in the country. Emmanuel Akila reports. The summit brings together heads of security agencies from across the country to help Gombe State consolidate on the peaceful coexistence she enjoys. For Governor Mohamed Ino Yahya, Gombe State, which has been the safe haven of the Northeast, cannot be allowed to fall to emerging security threats. It is imperative to note that Gombe State is not immune and insulated from the happenings in other parts of the country. We have our own share of local security threats, fueled by political tragedy, youth restiveness, and unemployment, which led to the emergence of the notorious Kalari Group. The proliferation of local militia groups, therefore,
Calls for a proactive approach in dealing with these emerging threats and applying local strategies in order to tackle them. Committee engagement like the security and peace summit by Gambia State Government falls perfect within the framework of this policing vision. To this extent, the Niger Police Force conveys its full and wholehearted support to the government of Gambia State under the leadership of His Excellency Governor Muhammadu Inouye Aya for the vision in convening this strategic summit. Part of the summit is the inauguration of this special security vehicles at Operation Hatala to help security agencies tackle emerging security challenges in the state and the country as a whole. This special drama is on the rise at the palace of the Premier of Gombe in honor of the guests. In Gombe, Emmanuel Akira, NT News. There will be next up news on NCA, new reports on security. After the break, please stay with us.
one, dash the seven eight five hash. Two, text your N I N seven eight five. Three, use WhatsApp to chat with C G. Four, use the My M T N N G app. Five, visit M T N dot N G forward slash N I N. Whatever method you choose, make sure you get a confirmation message. If you don't have an NIN, simply visit www.mtn.ng to book an appointment. Or just walk into an MTN store or NIMC center near you. What are we doing today? Thanks for watching the Network News on NTV. The Nigeria Police Force has dismissed Constable Leon Okoi attached to the Okoi Divisional Police Headquarters, Cross River State Command. The dismissal followed a gross misconduct captured in a viral video on the 31st of July 2022, where he was seen flogging a man with a machete. Francis Fong reports. The policeman who was identified in the video as police constable Lee Yoma Okoi with force number 524503 has ceased to be a member of the force because he has been dismissed. Lee Yoma Okoi who have been dismissed from the Nigerian Police Force has nothing to do with the Nigerian Police Force as from this moment. Warning that further incidences of this nature will be viewed strictly. He has also ordered an overhaul of the intelligence response team, the special tactical squad, and the special weapon and tactics units to ensure their operations are in accordance with their clear cut responsibilities. Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of the Force Intelligence Bureau has also been ordered to carry out supervisory roles over the three units to ensure their operations are professional, productive, and not infringe on the fundamental rights of the citizens. Franks is from MTA News. Now, there are lots of thoughts surrounding public safety and ways to go about it. At an open forum in Abuja, much was discussed on the implementation of the 2022 Police Reform Act. Abdulmanik Hassan tells us more. Just like every other day, the duty calls for these police officers who fit the threat. While their routine work is on, there were reported cases of abuse of power by some police officers. And SARS protests in 2020 seek to end the violation of human rights. The yearning was heard and the 2020 Police Reform Act established. Just a few days ago, a video went viral on social media of an unprofessional conduct by a police inspector who was subsequently dismissed. After a viral I now am informed that there was a just a place to exist within police safety for citing the implementation of the Police Reform Act. The focal point of today's open forum is targeted at the implementation of, of, of the Act aimed at providing an effective police force driven by the principles of professionalism, accountability,
Okay, so you have to develop practical, measurable indicators of uh, uh, police behavior, police conduct, police performance in relationship to elements within the law. So the law, in a, you know, in a broad sense, is not what we are implementing. There are indicators of the provisions from intelligence gathering to, to, to training communities on early warning, early response mechanisms. They will still beat people into getting confessions instead of using uh, IT skills in trying to know exactly what happened. The technical session holds afterwards, and hopefully, deliberations held will impact the Reform Act. Abdulmalik Hassan, NCA News. In other news, the federal government is reassuring Nigerians of its commitment towards deploying all the energy and resources to ensure that Kano Kaduna Standard Gauge Rail Project becomes a success. Minister of Transportation Muhammad Sambo stated this while on an inspection visit to the site. Amin Umar reports. The minister's first port of call was Yako in Kiru local government, a village that is hosting a yard for the project that is there in the heart of people and government of Kano State as well as the federal government. Kano Kaduna Standard Gate Rail Project, which was earlier scheduled to be completed within 36 months but revealed to 18 months, is now 11 months at 12% level of completion, with track lane to commence on November from Makarpi to Kamu. This is as a result of some challenges including an adjustment of the work from single to double track. The Minister Mahadu Sambo said federal government will engage all the key stakeholders to ensure that all the obstacles are surmounted. Because we intend to put all our energies and all we have to make sure that this project is a success. At the University of Transportation Daura, the minister expressed satisfaction with the progress of the work which started a year ago. But I can see evidence of real commitment. And the ministry has done sufficiently enough to um, get them motivated. It was earlier scheduled to be delivered in September this year. The contractors, however, asked for a new date, which the minister gave them two weeks to fix the date and forward to the ministry for consideration. In Kano, Anil Umar, NTA News. It was another joyous moment in Rivers State as Governor Wiki and his entourage were accorded a warm welcome for the migration of the Obina Valley Eastern Bypass Road, which before now was inadequate for vehicular movement. Ogedi Inyakwe reports that former Governor Sukoto State Ali Wamaku was a special guest for the project inauguration. Obunabali is one of the communities in Bukakot City local government area that has been engulfed by the cosmopolitan nature of Bukakot. Though it can be described as one of the hybra areas in Bukakot as it plays host to the old government residential area and the river state government house. The rose in the area was a far cry from what could be desired, but with the reconstruction and landscaping, it has enhanced the area. Kamunike says his passion to transform River State has compelled him to continue working even as he prepares to exit office. He lifted the ban on youth activities in Obunabani and fulfilled the monetary promise he made to the community. It is not because I am doing the way I'm performing. It is because I have that passion for my people. It is because I have a commitment to serve my people. The problem we have in this country today we don't have people who have that passion, who want to serve their people. Former governor of Sukoto State, Ali Wamako, who inaugurated the road, says the relevance of any government is the extent to which it attempts to serve and address the yearning and aspiration of the people. Let me repeat again that the Wiki, Governor Wiki, we are in very dynamic, very urgent. And talk and be governor of River State with the project on the line. The Umunabali Eastern Bypass Road, before its reconstruction, was a single carriageway which urbanization has made grossly inadequate for the increased vehicular movements. In Port Harcourt, Ogedi Nikwe, NTA News.
Hence, force developers are to be constantly reminded that the era of using unqualified construction firms will no longer be tolerated by the Council for the Regulation of Engineering Practice in Nigeria, Corin. This is one of the reasons for the increasing cases of building collapse in Nigeria, as cited by professionals at the opening of the 30th Corin Engineering Assembly holding in Abuja. The assembly is an annual event for stock taking and to professionally discuss technological innovations, advancements and problems of engineering and wish to address them. The EU State Governor Hope Uzodima says the view of environmental laws is critical to stemming the tide of oil theft in the country. He stated this when he received the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timber Silva, on a courtesy visit at the Government House, Uwari. Patrice Arnon reports. Petroleum, Timmy Pryor Silva and his entourage, among whom are the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, and the Group Managing Director, UNPC, are in Government House Uri, to seek collaboration of the United States Government and other stakeholders towards taking oil theft in the country. Governor Hope Uzodima says there is need to strengthen environmental laws by creating a strong enforcement unit that will ensure that laws against crude oil theft are obeyed. Said government under my watch will do our best and support oil producing companies in our states. We will do our best to collaborate with federal government to ensure that none of their programs are sabotaged. And on the side of federal government, we need support. While explaining the growing concerns over crude oil theft across the Niger Delta region, the Minister of Petroleum, Tim Pia Silva, says crude oil theft has become a national emergency that requires urgent and collective effort to take. Our OPEC quota today is about 1.8 million barrels per day. And for the past several months, we've been doing an average of 1.4. And you can see how much money we are losing every day. Armed forces and other state agencies are valuable for, to receive further support in terms of information and then, of course, bringing out or letting us know those who are behind this, this, this criminal enterprise for them to take their appropriate action. In Uri, Beatrice Anyam, NTA News. And for more reports on the news, let's join Hengeno in Lagos. Hello. Hanging up. Hello. Hanging up. Hello. 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 That's a part holiday, as the scenario here suggested, or rather, a clear indication that the once congested corridor is surrendering to intense pressure. A development that is already sending waves of excitement within the port's community. For transporters like Daniel Fawani, the disappearance of the trucks is coming the nerves of operators, giving way for genuine businesses to be done quickly. No, they do not allow any vehicle to park. No congestion, no delay, no anything. Everywhere you see, we are all happy about it. To guide against a relapse and the gains recorded, the Paul Standing Tax Team moves around the corridor, making a stop at suspicious flashpoints. But for all the successes recorded along the Apapa Corridor, there are build up of trucks and articulated vehicles on the outbound lane at Tintan Island Ports. And to get free access into our port and to guarantee the efficiency of service delivery in our port, there is no way are we able to achieve 
you know, the objective, principally, of being at least the West African hub of the marine industry as far as our region is concerned. This meeting is to assess the progress achieved in three months since the tax scheme was inaugurated with a view to identify areas of challenges. The national coordinator singled out state actors using the corridor as collection points. We are going to commence from a targeted stream of patients at night. We will move those actors there. Everything fish you out. All those things you see at night. It's not a fish at all. There is a control of those who come in. Why are forced to open up the entire 27 kilometer axis stretching from the Lagos port complex to Ijora and we may continue? Businesses that have disappeared in Akapa for instance are now resurfacing. In Lagos, Michael Alaya, NC News. The West African Examination Council, WAEC, has recorded 5.34% decrease in performance of candidates who obtained credits and above in a minimum of five subjects, including English language and mathematics. Head of the Nigeria National Office, Patrick Arrego, made this known while briefing the media on 2022 results. Exactly 45 days after the last paper of the West African Senior School Certificate Examination, results have been released. Announcing the development, head of the Nigerian National Office revealed that out of the 1,601,047 candidates that sat for the examination, 1,409,529 representing 88.04% obtained credits and above in a minimum of any five subjects with or without English language or mathematics, while 1,222,505 candidates representing 76.36% obtained credits and above in a minimum of five subjects, including English language and mathematics. This, he says, is a decline from last year's 81.7%. The activities of road website operators and the so-called miracle centers did not go unnoticed, and the council was able to identify and apprehend these unpatriotic fellows through the help of security operators. The council will continue to sanction all cases of examination malpractice. Schools, supervisors, teachers, and candidates perpetrating this evil are not helping the educational system. The white boss in the country assured those with few subjects withheld due to unresolved issues that their results will be released within one week. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nca.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Time for another break. The news will be back shortly. Amity National Center for Women Development, a home away from home. With our beautifully renovated hotel, center can also boast of a 1,700 seater auditorium for conferences. The edifice has African, continental, and Arabian restaurants. A daycare crash for nursing mothers. There is also an ICT department for computer training. And also a training department for catering, tailoring, and hairdressing. For more information, please contact the National Center for Women Development at the Far Valley Away, opposite the Central Bank of Nigeria's QB and Headquarters, Central District Area, or telephone 70 National Center for Women Development. Rebranded, restructuring, and repositioning. Never. Never again.
Gulf Federation announces its first Nigerian Gulf Federation Summit. This summit will discuss salient topical issues that relate to the development and upliftment of Gulf in Nigeria. Chairman General IBM Haruna, special guest of honor, Honorable Minister of Sports, Mr. Sunday Dare, convener, Okumba Orushoguru Shere, OON, President Nigeria Gulf Federation, date 31st August to 2nd September 2022, venue Nadikwale Hall, Sheraton Hotel and Towers, Abuja, time 10 a.m. prompts. This event is supported by Polaris Bank, Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa Independent Television, AIT, Gulf Garden, Anchor Insurance and Royal Ceramics. Okumba Orushoguru Shere, OON, President Nigeria Gulf Federation, announcer. In the world of business, we have a busy businessman burning for details. Thank you, Elizabeth, and welcome to business. The actions are appealed to the approval by the federal government for acquisition of share cartel of mobile producer Nigeria Unlimited by Suplab Energy. While many see it as a way to deepen investment in the energy sector and boost the drive for foreign direct investment, some of the view that all requirements in the Petroleum Industry Act should be carefully followed. We welcome the idea that the President and Mr. Pazide as Minister of Petroleum has given this approval to Sacrament, a local company. I applaud it and I think that is in the right direction. But then, um, before it becomes operational, it should go through the process where the Austrian Commission will be the beat and ensure that all the eyes are dotted and all the T's are crossed to ensure that Nigeria benefits and the ordinary Nigerian get the benefit of the all and that's the sense. In still talking energy, oil prices reversed early losses and traded higher on Tuesday, despite the latest progress in last-ditch talks to revive the 2015 Iran nuclear accord, which would clear the way to boost its crude exports in a tight market. Brent crude futures added 1.15% to trade at $97.76 per barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures stood at $91.66 for a gain of 1% after climbing 2% in the previous session. Traders will be watching out for weekly U.S. oil event. And on the capital markets, the market today hit a new low by 2.26% as investors lost 614 billion naira. Market capitalization stood at 26.6 trillion naira. 140.6 million shares valued at 1.6 billion naira exchanged hands in 3,895 deals. Your pool, gold, ICO, and Stalin Bank led in a volume. That is business news. Network news continues with Elizabeth.
Thank you, Brandon. Some economic matters about European Union. The EU is investing 1.1 trillion euros to strengthen the capacity for implementation of key national economic policies and initiatives, including documentation and visibility of EU projects in Nigeria. Head of Cooperation, EU Delegation to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Cecil Tassin, gave the insight at the unveiling of the projects in Abuja, Neka Oko reports. The formulation of economic policy strategies to promote growth, job creation, and inclusive national development has been a regular feature in Nigeria's democratic transformation. The medium-term National Development Plan 2021-2025 is the latest in line of such strategies and promises to surmount some of the challenges that marred the success of previous plans. While the creation of these policies at various points in the country's transition has been indicative of a commitment to economic progress, implementing them has been severely tested by many factors including capacity of relevant implementing institutions. This is why the officers drawn from overseas MPAs under the Civil Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning are meeting to build their capacity for the implementation of the new National Development Plan. The project that we are launching today is to assist the Ministry with their efforts to design and implement the best economy, the best practice economic policy proposals. I call this filling out pillars. Okay, so that we want to explain the program to them, the plan, so that when they go out to other MDAs, because not all the MDAs are here. The project received the endorsement of other supporting partners. The Nigerian Development Plan has been, has an important role in ensuring well-coordinated support from the international community to the government in the achievement of its medium and long-term objectives. The project is expected to last eight months. Neka Oku, NTA News. The approval of $2.5 billion for the development of the Badagri Deep Sea Port in Lagos State has reaffirmed the commitment of President Muhammad Buhari's philosophy of private sector leadership in its economic development agenda. A statement signed by the Chairman of Buhari Media Organization, E.A. Mwani Akinshiju, states that the gesture also shows a strong determination to diversify the nation's economy. The statement adds that the Badagri Sea Port wishes to be executed and a public-private partnership scheme. The private sector will inject money into the port project and manage it for 45 years before the final takeover by the federal government. The project to be developed in four phases will help the country generate revenue of $53.6 billion over the concession period as well as create jobs and attract foreign direct investments, culminating in an improvement in the well-being of Nigerians. In our next sense, it has not recognized any candidate from Ruben North and acquired the North West Senatorial Districts in respect to Senators Hamid Lawan and Gotsula Padu. The Commission was reacting to an online publication alleging that INEC has structured, updated, and certified documents to accommodate Senators Lawan and Gotsula Padu. In a statement by INEC's National Commissioner for Information, Festus Kukui, the Commission calls for a responsible reportage as against the, un the unwarranted attack on the Commission and its officials over a matter that can be easily fact-checked. Millions voted in Kenya's closely fought polls in search of the country's next president. Charles Arthur takes a look at the country's political history and the general elections that just ended with counting of votes underway. More than 22 million Kenyan voters took to the polls to choose who will be their leader for the next five years. President Uhuru Kenyatta, who was elected in the 2013 general election, became the fourth elected president after Jomo Kenyatta, who ruled from 1964 to 1978. Kenya's longest serving president, Daniel Arapa, 1978 to 2002. Mike Kibaki ruled from 2002 to 2013. 
And now, I'm going to pass it down to Hong Kenyatta, brings to an end a nine-year reign. Four men have presented themselves to succeed President Kenyatta. The former Prime Minister Rihanna Odinga, Vice President William Subuta, David Wahiga, and George Wajakoya. Polls were opening early, recording a large turnout of voters nationwide. A candidate needs more than half of all votes and at least 25% of votes in more than half of Kenya's 47 countries. No outright winner means a runoff election within 30 days. We just started counting like, the presidential uh, ballots and after that they will count the governor um, and then you know, for the county as and the Senate. Kenya's Electoral Commission is yet to announce the total turnout, but about an hour before polls closed, just over 56% of the 22 million registered voters had cast their ballots. Charles Alpha, NT News. Time to head to Kaduna, where Suleiman is standing by with some reports. Nice to see you, Suleiman. And welcome. Security has been beefed up along Abuja Kaduna Highway as part of mop up exercise to flush terrorists and kidnappers operating along that corridor. Omar Ajingi reports that the combined security personnel are combing bushy areas suspected to serve as criminals den. The main duty of this security personnel along Kaduna Abuja Highway is to show sector motors down the road against any form of threat, especially by terrorists or kidnappers. And this is in compliance with the presidential directives of Operation No Mercy Against Terrorist Groups. There is relative calm along the corridor, following sustained surveillance by armed security personnel. The motorists flying the route attested to the result of this operation. The route is now safe. The military are trying their best. Our police deserve condemnation. Our security forces do not deserve condemnation. Our security forces do not deserve uh, people to come with uh, stories that will not motivate them. Communities along the highway such as region and Katari considered flashpoints are now happy with the measures taken to secure the area. Since the beginning of this operation, we didn't experience any kidnapping in the area. The president said the exercise has been a success with security authorities making inroads into the criminals' den. Communities in Kaduna Metropolis residing along Riverbank have been exercising fear over possible flood as predicted by the Nigeria Meteorological Agency. They are however advised to take precautionary measures to mitigate the disaster. Harina Mohammed has the details. There are four bridges over River Kaduna, including the recently constructed 270 meters bridge linking Kabala Kostin and Barnawa, among which is this one with a water level indicator. And as it is, the water level indicator is at the amber level, signaling warning for an impending flooding. Residents of Kabala Kostin, Abuka Kibo Road, Ungorini, and some parts of Barnawa are areas affected by flooding during rain season as a result of overflow of River Kaduna. The occurrence of this type of disaster over the years claimed lives and property worth millions of naira. The way they show you this drilling, come down come the starting drilling. Inshallah, the drilling it will help people. The the ambalia will not go come again. The situation is further compounded by the inability of these communities to provide embankment along the riverside. Prediction has it that Kaduna is among states to witness flooding, and some parts of Kaduna North, Kaduna South, and Chukun local government areas are likely to be affected. Government on its part is taking steps to address the fears of communities residing along the bank of River Kaduna. He has um, commenced you know, sensitization of um, you know, uh, people that are you know, residing around these areas you know, to desist from dumping um, Waste in waterways. However, waterways and drainages remain blocked as people continue to dump refuse indiscriminately, which 
is another factor contributing to flooding. In Kaduna, Haruna Muhammad, NTA News. More reports ahead with Elizabeth in Abuja after the break. King Everett Boy TV has the Gabon Zion momentum to passion for doing to watch. Remember, the errors of your openers do not become your sources. Do not run down your openers and inflame passions for violence between them and their close supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to leave the suckers and stand being sucker. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders and organizers and leaders who will make passion free their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do in your government roles. Focus on making your future clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal accusations, fake news, or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will gain progress. Remember hard the minds of the people by being a world war, by being free, patriotic, and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. The message from the National Orientation Agency. Talking sports now, the state of Victoria in Australia will host the next Commonwealth Games in 2026. Let's join Abdullah Ajia on how the curtain was drawn at the 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. It's been 11 days of games, fun, anxiety, happy and sad moments for athletes, countries and territories of the Commonwealth nations, including Team Nigeria, who made the list of the 5,000 athletes who competed for Mars and Glory. Just like the colorful opening ceremony done in a rich British culture and modern fashion, the closing ceremony was not short of a beautiful display to behold. As the curtain closed, this historic chapter of the 22nd edition of the Commonwealth Games in Alexandra Stadium in Birmingham, England. Of course, the sterling performance and successes of participating nations like Nigeria, Fiji, and Sims is still being cherished with moments that reignite and inspire hope for Nigeria's future sport mountain. The city of Victoria in Australia will be the next host destination for the 2026 Commonwealth Games. For this, for now, I'm the Mahatia, NTA News. And that's the news. Thank you so much for watching. Do remember to always take action against rape and rapists. And Elizabeth, good morning. Naturally, is created. 